Peace, everyone. I'm super excited to be inviting us all into a second video connected to and moving alongside and weaving all around um, Emergent Strategy by Adrienne Marie Brown. I am just uh, on the other end of being sick, so <laughs> hopefully you're not gonna, hopefully it's not, and if it is, hey, we are human, there's no hiding, there's no perf perfectionism and keeping all things to get, it's an illusion, so the mess will show itself as it needs to. Um, by the way, I'm holding this amazing mug, the Center for Justice and Renewal, Beautiful space, beautiful place. Check that out um, with Dr. Christina Cleveland. So many, so many beautiful things. Um, you're looking at just these amazing rocks that I've been gathering. Um, if you didn't catch that in the other video that I'm drilling and polishing and kind of molding into these uh, beautiful gifts, I'm calling them grounded being rocks um, just for just for centering, for, for authenticity, for clarity, for, for holding ground um, in a time where there is so much that wants us to be ungrounded. So they're precious. Uh, and I love that they're just, you know, in this conversation that we're gonna have together. Um, so let's, let's just start wherever this meets you, wherever you are, um, let's just start with our breathing if you want to, just put both feet flat on the ground, opening your body, your core, your heart to just all that's around you and all that's within you. Take a deep breath all the way in. And all the way out. Being extra mindful of the branches in your lungs moving, absorbing, maintaining life. This relationship of air flowing in from the earth up and all of our truth flowing out as we breathe out. Just breathing in, breathing out. As we move through these words and these frames and these invitations that you're allowing to the best that you can, your whole self, your whole person, your whole being, all the things, no hiding, no filtering, less pretending, less posturing. We are such dynamic, we have so much going on inside of us. And so often, all that's within us stays within us and doesn't move out into the world as it needs to, as it should, as it cries for, as it hopes for, as it aches. And so in just in this, in these 15, 20, 30 minutes, we're gonna just honor to the best that we can all that's moving, all that sometimes never gets attention. So honoring all the things, all the things as you breathe in and as you breathe out. So let's just hold that just for a minute um, in stillness, in being, that we are enough as we are right here. Well, I am, um, so if, I, I'm, I'm super 
excited and energized by Adrian's work and just putting beautiful words to that even in the words are just so limited to the essence, the aura, the vibration, the frequency of what all this means inside of our living and doing and being and producing and resting and all the things. And so um, if you haven't yet watched the first video, which is, um, uh, which is posted with some other things in the Patreon, in the Intrinsic Paths Patreon posting, if you're not an Intrinsic Paths patron, you can find the first video on the Intrinsic Paths YouTube channel. So you can watch it that way. Um, so I would recommend watching that one first um, if, you, if you haven't yet watched it um, or watch this one and then go back to that one and then maybe come back. There's just context in that one that will help hold space. And this is all coming from this beautiful book. So I highly recommend uh, just getting this book, finding it, ordering it, sharing it, all the things. Um, and so the the first, um, the first video holds space for, um, we are in uh, the chapter Elements of Emergent Strategy. And thinking about emergence, this, this, the term, the frame, the invitation of emergence. How are we in our relationships, in our workspaces, workspaces, our, our committee spaces, our faith, spiritual, religious spaces, our family, friendship, all the, th all the spaces we, we share and hold. How are we getting creative around? How are we being guided to? How are we intentionally protecting time for emergence, for things to emerge, for things to, 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 to show up organically, rather than so many defaults that want us to control time, stick to the thing, this is what we've always done, this is what we have to, like the controlling kind of power dynamics of even though maybe there's so much good intention and there's so much beautiful mission and outpouring from that space and still a need for some of that, for, for, the, for the organization, for the structure, for the, for the whole, also and, how are we creating and, and protecting and honoring time for things to emerge out the side, up from the middle, newness, creative imagination, things that, that, that are honoring what's actually going on in each of us and not just sticking to the plan, the lines, the, the structure. So emergence, what's going to emerge when we allow honest, vulnerable, open-ended time for things to show up? for things to, to happen organically. And, and so what we went through in video one was just looking at these, uh, what this group in Detroit uh, uses, this group's called Complex Movements, um, and they have an emblem system. And we talked about uh, mycelium, interconnectedness, remediation, detoxification. We talked about ants, cooperative work, collective sustainability. We talked about ferns. Um, small scale solutions, impacting the whole system. We talked about the wavical, wave particle duality, um, looking at uncertainty and doubt, valuing both process and outcome, starlings, uh, collective leadership, partnership, adaptability. Oh my gosh. All these, all these words, <laughs> all of them. And then dandelions, resistance, resilience, regeneration, and decentralization. So kind of going through those, combing through those, and again, filtering your relationships, filtering your work vocation spaces, filtering these larger systems that manage our money and manage schools and manage even the political realm. Like to, to be in a place where we are unpacking, peeling, and, and, and getting behind and going deeper into how are these systems, how are my relationships, how is my everyday behavior within a working environment tapping into emergence and not just grinding, maintaining, structuring, controlling, limiting. It's 
So just be in wonder around all of this. So what I'm going to go into right now, I'm going to continue reading. This is page 46. You'll see these are the different emblems that um, Adrian and Complex Movement uh, are using. And I'm just going to continue reading. So we stopped at the last video right after kind of going into those specific elements. And I'm going to just read um, these two pages and then we're going to go into another list of things and kind of unpack those. Um, and I've just decided there's going to be a series of videos on, on this framing. And it's so imperfect coming out of my, out of my mouth because I'm, because we are all imperfect and we are all fumbling through themes like this. There's no, there's no, there's no clear direct path that that's, that's at the end of this video or any of these videos. There's no, there's no perfection coming out of my body and my what I feel is an ache and I want to offer and invite the ache. And so let's be in wonder together um, as, as, as you listen to these words. So just take another deep breath. Grounding to our body, to our practice, to our breathing, to humility. So sitting with the questions of how I could transform some of the heartbreak I have experienced in nonprofit work, and I would just add any work, uh, social work, public work, government work, business work, anything that we would define as producing and work, into lessons that could offer other paths forward. I found that part of the opportunity was to pay deeper attention to how the natural world has solved these same problems. So thinking back to these elements, starlings, dandelions, ants, mycelium, ferns. I do believe that what we pay attention to grows. So I wanted to stop growing the crisis, the critique. The elements in this book are a way to shift my attention to the positive, to what I want to grow. I like the word biomimicry, and I love knowing that the practices of mimicking the natural world have been happening since humans came into existence. This is actually an ancient practice, a recovery rather than a discovery. Quote, biomimicry is basically taking a design challenge and then finding an ecosystem that has already solved that challenge and literally trying to emulate what you learn. There are three types of biomimicry. One is copying form and shape. Another is copying a process like photosynthesis in a leaf. And the third is mimicking at an ecosystem's level, like building a nature-inspired city. It's by Janine Benyus. The elements I explore reference aspects of the natural world operating at each of these levels, though the bulk of examples aim at the systems and processes. For each of these elements, we spiral from the simple understanding to the more complex ways of thinking about applying the element to our movement work. I define what the element is according to a dictionary, point out some of the places we see this element in nature, then offer up writing I've done on the element moving from the personal through organizational to movement or collective levels. Towards the end is a brief assessment tool. So towards the end of this book, and we'll hopefully get to that in future videos, you can use to reflect on how much emergent strategy is showing up in your life and work. Then I share some of the emergent strategy practices and tools that I have worked with to create tangible differences in movement work. So here's, so just holding some of how she's guiding and moving some information. And here's where we're going to get into some of the doubt or, or the complexity of, okay, that's, what, what, how, you know, cause this, a lot of these terms, a lot of these limitations, like there's such a default to make it tangible, make it, make it concrete. So let's move in. Let's go deeper into why am I experiencing doubt? around these things. Why am maybe I, why am I a little unsettled in listening to this long haired dude who's half awake? <laughs> like what, where are all the doubts kicking in? Where's all the, where's the blocks? She continues, I'll add this because of some of the doubt I've seen people experience when approaching these concepts. Some people are more comfortable with emergent strategy than others but I don't think this has to do with personality or intelligence. 
We are already emergent beings just by our very existence, but we've been tricked away from it. Nature versus nurture is part of this. And then there is what, and then there is what I think of as anti-nurturing. That term, anti-nurturing. Let's hold that. The ways we in a Western US context are socialized to work against respecting the emergent process of the world and of each other. Anti-nurturing. And so now I'm going to go through a list and she offers just a, a bulleted list of anti-nurturing, ways we in the Western US context are socialized to work against respecting the emergent process of the world and each other. And now we're gonna move through a list of bullets. So bullet one. And again, as, as you listen to these, be open, just be open. Allow emergence to show up. If it makes you angry, if it makes you sad, if it makes you uh, even cling harder and tighter to an idea or a construct or a way of being and thinking, just notice, notice how it makes you feel and just be open to emergence within yourself as these are, as these are framed out. So the first bullet, we learn to disrespect indigenous and direct ties to land. So think about that. How much in all of our being, school, assignments, everyday encounters and interactions, how much time and rooted practice, rooted way of being are we going into respecting indigenous and direct ties to land? And why not? What's what has infilled our, our every day that has gotten us away from this? Nature versus nurture, anti-nurturing. The second bullet, we learn to be quiet, polite, indirect, and submissive, not to disturb the status quo. So this intuitive body, the heart body, stories, this is how it makes me feel. I don't want to disrupt. I don't want to make people uncomfortable. I don't want to, and in all these are honest, real spaces. They're, they're all, we all struggle in this swirl. Um, and, and let's peel it back. Why? What, what keeps us be quiet, be polite, be in line, be indirect, be submissive. Do not disturb the status quo. Who created the status quo? What is the status quo? What is being maintained and upheld by the status quo? And does it actually nurture our relationships and our planet? We learn facts out of context of application in school. How will this history, science, math show up in our lives in the work of growing community and home? So the context of all of these different things happening in so many of our everyday schools and the actual like wholehearted, holistic, whole human application, context into, again, nurturing of relationship, of planet, of self. We learn that tests and deadlines are the reasons to take action. This puts those with good short-term memories and a positive response to pressure in leadership positions, leading to urgency-based thinking, regardless of the circumstance. <laughs> so it's just what, so much that gets crammed into our psyche around, I am successful if, I am powerful if, I am healthy if, I can get Deadlines, met, made, moving. I can, I can produce at a certain level in a certain kind of way. Therefore, I'm, I'm somehow checking all these. Who's made, who made the boxes? Who's maintaining those boxes? Is, is that really, is it, is it, is it nurturing all of who we, all, all of who we really are? Or all of who, the systems, the, the, the corporations want us, need us to be, to maintain a certain story. So I'm just, I'm asking these questions. We're going into wonder around this. We learn to compete with each other in a scarcity-based economy that denies and destroys the abundant world we actually live in. 
So I want to go back to that last one and, and how it ties a little bit to this one, urgency-based thinking. So, so imagine trust-based thinking, relationship-based thinking, humanity slowing down, presence-based thinking, right? What, what about these terms and why can't we integrate them? Are they a threat to scarcity-based economy, right? Like where does that connect? How does that connect? Scarcity, I don't have enough, there's not enough, I need to keep accumulating, I need to keep extracting, I need to keep hoarding, I need to keep, like I need to keep saving. And so this isn't, um, this isn't judgment, we all are in this journey and, and figuring out how to unpack these things. And, and so, so, so this, this doesn't come with judgment around, I want to save to feel, this is, I didn't have a lot here and this is, it's just as we imagine a future, as we imagine a life that is not anti-nurturing, but that goes into nurturing and trusting and loving and moving. What does it look like to have and to create time and space for abundance, abundant thinking, where we do have enough to support each other, where what's mine is yours, where where we can be in a, sh a more of a sharing collective community-driven relationship to our resources and our things and our and our and our own emotions and instead of isolating 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 mine 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 and that gets smaller and narrower and more lonely I mean, all the questions around that we learn to deny our longings and our skills and to do work that occupies our hours without inspiring our greatness so, so this makes me think of some of the, 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 the terminology transaction versus transformation. How much of our day-to-day -day output, life, energy is going into a transaction of materials, of goods, of things, of, of production, and how much is going to this inner outer transformation, a, a process of greatness and loving who we are, radically loving who we are so that it is unquestionable to radically love other beloveds and to love and honor and protect this planet. We learn to manipulate each other and sell things to each other rather than learning to collaborate and evolve together. So again, back to this, back to transaction and transformation, holding up this separate, this idea of the separate self that I am separate from you. I am not a part of you. So with that thinking, then it's protecting, it's hoarding, it's holding, it's, 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 it, it, while there's reasons for it that are, that are real and authentic as can we imagine more uncovering, more vulnerability, more openness, so that the essence of, of collaboration and relationship and evolving together doesn't just become an idea in the head, but it becomes essential to survival and to human being, human being um, in this life. We learn that the natural world is to be manicured, controlled, or pillaged to support our consumeristic lives. Even the natural lives of our bodies get medicated, pathologized, shaved, or improved upon with cosmetic adjustments. So, you know, I think about the false self, the true self. You hear some of these terms like, and that just me. Who am I trying to be on the outside? Who am I, what am I, who am I, uh, where, like what masks am I wearing? How am I pretending? How am I trying to be what something almost artificial has, has told me to be, to be seen, to be loved, to be successful, to be, to be nurtured, essentially, anti-nurtured potentially, but like to be, I am because I'm this, not because I am. Not because I'm honoring what's just real about who I am, how I wake up, what I look like, how I show, all the things, and all the complexity and grace around how we, how we hold these questions. We learn that factors beyond our control determine the quality of our lives. Something as random as which skin, gender, sexuality, ability, nation, or belief system we are born into sets a path for survival and quality of life. The politics of racism, the politics, the, the control 
of religion and sexual orientation, the fear of, of, of someone who is different. The, so there's like the tribalism of, of, of kind of clinging to what I know. So it's, you know, at least for me, I, you know, I don't, it's like, it's an honoring of subjectivity. It's an honoring of how unique people grow up in the world. And there's always this portal of emergence, of, of being open, that just doesn't cling and defend and, and scathe and hate and separate. And just the questions around that. In the United States specifically, though I see this most places I travel, we learn that we only have value if we can produce. Only then do we earn food, home, healthcare, education. So again, this, this human as producer, as, as just busy, like kind of solely focused worker bee. And again, there's so much around this. This isn't with judgment. This isn't with, it's the, it's the honoring of like thinking about the ants, like the work there, there is work to be done. There is work and toil and sweat. There is all these things that go into uh, day to day working and doing. And if it's the only thing, if it's the central thing that defines who we are in the world, what are we missing? What doesn't get honored? What gets destroyed in the wake of that being at the center? Similarly, we learn our organizations are only as successful as our fundraising results, whether the community impact is powerful or not. And I would even add, so she's specifically speaking to social justice movements, nonprofits, but I would just add too, like any business, any product, if we are solely bottom line, transaction, product, money oriented, I mean, all of the humanity, earth, reality, relationship, love, every, all the things that get sacrificed at that level, you know, so then paring that down and how has, how has that how is that still activated in these movements that are attempting and working and thriving within and working to thrive within helping us love each other better, helping us take care of each other in more nurturing ways? How are those spaces still just, just taking this, taking all these themes of anti-nurturing with them? Three more bullets. Three more bullets. Okay. I know this is a lot. So I, I hope there's just, just again, be, be breathing, be open. Um, you might need to rewatch some of these things over again. You might just get the book and kind of sit with these different bullets, each one at a time, maybe write some notes on, this is how this feels in me. This is, this is, this is where I'm getting agitated, or this is where I might be getting judgmental, or this is where um, I may be saying, oh, that's great for you, Jonathan, but that's not real for me. Just whatever it is, just, just listen to what's emerging in you as some of these themes come up. We learn as children to swallow our tears and any other inconvenient emotions. And as adults, that translates into working through red flags, value differences, pain, and exhaustion. So let me read that one again. We learn as children to swallow our tears and any other inconvenient emotion. And as adults, that translates into working through red flags, value differences, pain, and exhaustion. So this, this I would just, I, I feel like it's just not honoring what's naturally coming up. So it's connected to just this, what I was just saying before, like just honor, what, honor your emotion, honor tears, honor rage, honor. How are we allowing it to go all the way out and through in a way that's just honoring of where, where that's coming from? And the self-awareness practices to kind of dissect it, open it, move it. And again, the, the protecting of space to let these honest, honest, open-ended realities move. The emergence, the emergence of these things. We learn to bond through gossip, venting, and destroying, rather than cultivating solutions together. I can't even begin. We're all guilty of this all of us in, in so many ways. And the thing that I find with a friend of mine, a dear friend, um, Nicole Huguenin and others uh, who do so much beautiful work around these topics, 
Um, the, the, I think about moving at the speed of trust. That, okay, if I'm not if I'm not feeling connected or if I have a judgment or if I have something that is in a small way destroying the credibility, integrity, and beauty and divine belovedness of this person in any way, how am I moving into trust, relationship, and solution? And I'm, that doesn't mean I need to get together maybe with every single person that I have a disagreement with, but how am I leaving room inside of that space of wonder for, I don't know the full story. I, this is an emerging space. This isn't a locked gossip venting this side or that binary destruction my, that I'm energetically holding. What will emerge when I, if I reach out, go into relationship, come up with a solution that helps tie threads of trust again, or maybe for the first time. And the, the final bullet in her list here, perhaps the most egregious, I always, I'm so bad with words sometimes, uh, thing we are taught is that we should just be really good at what's already possible to leave the impossible alone that we should be really good at what's already possible to leave the impossible alone. And I, this, that final, I just, it just, it takes my breath away. You know, yesterday, November 13th, I'm doing this video on November 14th, 2019, and November 13th every year, I'm always like full of ache. It's the day that I finished walking across the US in 2010 when I landed at, the beach in San Francisco and and while you know it, it's there's the, the magic of that experience with without question has has filled my body to the brim with with the 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 like lived tasted drink that I mean I these words and these invitations are so like the, the volume of the drumming is so loud in me, and I know that long 242 day walk pounded it into my being, like these kinds of things, because it's exactly what I experienced every single day, every single day. This, I don't know what's beyond this horizon, around the turn, where I'm gonna sleep, what I'm gonna eat, who I'm gonna meet, and I have to, in, I'm choosing to engage this every day for almost a year into my everything. And so continuing from that, I've just given much, so much of my life. This is why walking practice, walking embodiment, rolling if you're on a wheelchair, like movement-based outside of our walls, outside of just the screens, movement-based relationship, learning, wisdom, all the things. It's why I care so much about walking practice and walking culture and walking like dignity is this human human way of being that moves us into the impossible, moves us into the unknown, moves us into mystery. You'll notice uh, if you're on Patreon, the last theme for the Ways of Walking workshop that I have, it's a self-guided 12 theme thing. The last one is walking as mystery. And how are we creating space to honor, to hold, to uplift, to name, to rename, to struggle with, what has yet to be seen and yet to be done. And that has fueled so much of my confidence. And again, I say confidence loosely. It's imperfect, it's humble, it's messy, it's not, I'm not great at structure. For anybody that knows me, you know that. And I care so much about emergence and moving and tapping into what is yet to be seen. So it's why everyone would say to me with when Walk to Connect was starting in 2012, like, what? Walking as a program, as an organization, as a, as a service, as a thing? You're nuts. You're crazy. I, I, why would I ever, I walk all the time or I don't or I hate it, whatever. I was just like, I, 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 this just needs, I just feel, uh, create, 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 imagine, experiment, experiment, evolve, adapt, all the things, trust, open, slow down. It's just loud in me. And, and it's been beautiful to see how from that place and with beloveds who bring structure and love, not in isolation, but in community, can create 
so much emergent energy for where we're going through and with the spaces and in the spaces between. So I'm going to just read a couple of these paragraphs and then we'll close. I know we're at 35 minutes here, so thank you, um, blessed people, for being um, alongside this video. Lots of people and organizations have been and are critical of these ways we socialize each other and have offered solutions. She goes on, I think here of Harriet Tubman, Ella Baker, Franz Fanon, Karl Marx, Augusto Ball, Malcolm X, the Zapatistas, and others throughout history who I believe have felt the thrum of emergence in their systems and moved what was possible in their lifetimes. I love that. Moved what was possible in their lifetimes, such as their impacts reverberate in my life, such as, such that, their impacts reverberate in my life and the work of my generation. We are still mostly misdirected, turned away from the wisdom that is our inheritance. Joanna Macy speaks of the great turning, a collective awakening and shifting direction, away from the wanton destruction of this planet and each other, away from those practices of separation and competition listed above, towards life and abundance. I like this visual of turning and evolving turning and evolving, and it's just humility all around it, messing up, fumbling, falling, but turning and evolving, turning and evolving, as opposed to destroying the systems in place now. So it's not set, sometimes it needs to be fire and you just gotta blow some shit up. I'm all, like, I'm a nine on the Enneagram, anger's all up in me, I get that. And if we are not turning and evolving, and not and, 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 and moving into a creative field beyond just destroying and opposing. Where are we headed? How are we imagining what's next? And in a way that honors all of our being. When Wheatley visited Detro Detroit on a learning journey, she said systems built on greed eventually collapse on themselves, topple under their own top heavy weight. Matter doesn't disappear, it transforms. Energy is the same way. The earth is layer upon layer of all that has existed, remembered by the dirt. It is time to turn capitalism into a fossil, time to turn the soil, turn to the, horiz turn to the horizon together. I just love these words. If, as you are engaging these elements, a clearer framework appears or an additional piece, that's good news, Let's all be conduits of the wisdom of this planet. I think any efforts to engage the emergent brilliance of our world will help with this turning, will help with liberating humanity from its current role as a virus Earth should shake off. So, without further ado, the elements. And she goes in the elements, fractal, adaptive, interdependence and decentralization, nonlinear and iterative, Resilience and transformative justice, creating more possibilities. And then she goes into the nature of elements. So with fractal, the relationship between small and large, adaptive, how we change, interdependence and decentralization, who we are and how we share. Nonlinear and iterative, the pace and pathways of change, resilience and transformative justice, how we recover and transform, creating more possibilities, how we move towards life. Okay. So let's take a deep breath. Just all those words, all those invitations, all the emotion, all the doubts, all the frustration. All the joy, all the dreams, all the hopes, the horizon, the earth, the people, the hearts, the pain, the glory, the guts, the guts. To turn and evolve, to open and love, to emerge, 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 to trust, to trust, to trust. Together, 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 deeper, deeper, deeper. Peace, everyone. Thank you. If you have moved in this with me for 40 minutes, blessings. <laughs> um, please.
please comments, questions, ideas, anything. If this video is meaningful, please share it with anyone. Um, definitely consider watching the first one if you haven't seen it. Um, and uh, a huge thank you to Intrinsic Paths patrons. Each of you allow videos and space and time and imagination around these themes and topics to uh, you make it possible for me to hold space in this way. Um, if you are interested in moving alongside as a patron, um, the nature wisdom, now I'm not trying to get all tiered and leveled, the $10 plus thing is only just because of shipping and all that. So don't feel any pressure. If money's ever an issue and you wanna rock one of these grounded being rock necklaces, they're so rocking. Um, just send me a message and we'll figure out a way to get you one without all that uh, transactional stuff. So just be blessed, be invited, um, and peace to your journey. Uh, I crave to be alongside you and your work and your team and your relationships as you explore this imperfectly. I'm learning. I don't have all the, I don't have answers. I think I just ache for invitation and want to be, um, alongside you as you explore it. So peace friends. Thank you for your time. Cheers. And thank you, Adrian Marie Brown and Emergent Strategy. Follow, connect to her work. She has a membership. If you want to support what she's doing in the world, you go to her website, Adrian. I think it's adrianmariebrown.com. Okay, peace.